again, about a top eight side. What's going on, poor fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to be reviewing what was a pretty disappointing round 17 loss to Melbourne Thursday night football did not pan out the way we expected. And well, it was basically a copy and paste performance from other times we've played against top eight sides. And top four sides in particular now have become our, uh, our well, pain in the ass really because every time we come up against them it's the same formula we just don't quite get it right we're lacking polish and it's just become the same narrative that I think all of us Port fans now are really sick of so to be so close last year and to come into this year expecting uh, big things especially a premiership um, we're failing at the moment and yeah it's round 17 optimistically you could say there's still six rounds to go wherever you finish um, can help out as much as possible getting into you know, the top four or you know, home final and um, anything can happen from there but I think it doesn't really matter what happens from here on in I, I just don't have I think and many of us can agree with we don't quite have the confidence in our team at the moment to suggest that we're going to be playing a big role this year and in September and you can see by the polish the D's have and the, the way they were able to handle pressure and get themselves out of tough situations and their defensive unit and their structure was almost perfect last night and you know ours was uh, ours was quite shaky and we just weren't able to move the ball as freely as we'd like and every time we did we'd butcher it going inside 50 putting it to a one on two with Charlie being the one or uh, it just wasn't to our advantage and um, yeah, it just it just didn't quite work throughout the whole night and that's been the story of the year but credit where credit's due, Melbourne, they're a top four team this year for a reason. They've been fantastic uh, throughout the whole year. They've had a little bit of blips here and there, but overall their their performances definitely outweigh uh, any negativity that they they get towards them at any stage. And we've known now they've been putting out solid performances consistently throughout the whole year. And they're going to be there or thereabouts at the end come September. And we're not probably we'll be lucky to make a semi-final and if we do we'll probably get knocked out i can't see us doing much this year i know yeah we're missing a few players but to get cleary and butters back butters didn't have a, as big of an impact that he would have liked and cleary was probably caught in a bit of a, a mess that the back line was with mckenzie cleary jonas lena and alia alia i don't know why we play all five um that they just didn't work and and too many passengers again it's already it's left to a few bulk wines charlie can't do um, well, he was outweighed, outworked last night by Stephen May. And May is an incredible performer. Um, he's a great defender, and Charlie just couldn't get a, couldn't get away from him, couldn't get anywhere near the footy. And I think now, overall, you just you just can't put a finger on why we can't snap into four quarters. You know, we had that second quarter where we you know, down by nineteen at half time after only trailing by six. A quarter time was pretty even first quarter. The third quarter, we were dominant for most part and uh, Melbourne were able to just score so freely and we worked so hard for our goals and in the end, you know, you know especially in the third quarter, we worked so hard to get the goal to Georgiatis um, from Carl Amon's brilliant kick inside 50. We worked so hard for that one to get us back within nine points and then within 30 seconds, Tom McDonald's lining up for a goal after a great clearance by, um, by Melbourne. And it, it's starting to get... Frustrating again. Like, this is 2018, 2019 frustration of we have this this game plan that's now outdated. Um, it worked in 28, uh, 2017 to some degree. 2018 fell apart in the end. Um, our season derailed. 2019 we, we obviously reset um, and, and went for something a little bit different. 2020 our game plan was very suited to the 2020 style of play and um, it, it held up really well. Our defensive unit was great, and it just worked a treat. And now we come into twenty twenty one with these rule changes, and we looked so good early on. I thought we wouldn't ever putting four quarters together, but we were playing solid football. And now we've come to a point where it's just not not even enjoyable to watch. Like we know that probably next week we'll come out and beat St Kilda. Like there's no enjoyment in that. And, and footy for us fans is, is something that's been... Well, last year was enjoyable. You know, it, was, it was purely footy. There was obviously COVID impacts and everything. We just got to watch football. And it was enjoyable. And Port were winning and 
you know, to get to a prelim, we knew what the heartache was like, and um, we accepted that, and we came into this year with optimism. And now we're at the stage where, again, we're just not good enough. We're just not good enough. I don't know how else to put it. It's so simple. We're just not good enough. We've gone through everything, gone through players, young and old, game plan structures, rule changes, assistant coaches. There's one left that we haven't changed, and it's Ken. And it's it's tough to say because I've been one of the last few that's probably suggested we'll get there, we will get there. We're not going to get there at this rate, and it's disappointing. It's frustrating. The fact that we're so incomplete on the field is just even worse. Port Adelaide, supporting Port Adelaide is like the vaccine rollout at the moment. You know, in the end, they'll get it right. But until then, it's just a painful wait and see. And every single week, we're just knowing that what's going to turn up is just not good enough. And I think, you know, you'll go on and beat St Kilda next week, probably by five goals, and it'll be happy days. Come into Collingwood the week after at home. And it'll be like, you beauty, probably another victory. Week after that, we play the Giants, which would be a good contest, but I'd expect us to get that job done. And the week after that, you know, we I think we come back to Carlton here at home, and then the Bulldogs is the, the last test before finals. I hope, I hope for everyone else's sake that this season doesn't derail like a 2018. But in, in saying that, it's not very exciting to be a part of that you know the end result is not going to be us lifting that cup, but we're going to be playing finals. It's such a... It, I don't know how to describe it. And it sucks. And I don't blame individual performances anymore because as a collective, it's just not good enough. You can have so many good performances and players stand up every week, different players play their role. But at the end of the day, as a collective, there's always someone letting someone else down. It's always someone not getting it quite right. And it's just a flow-on effect. And, you know, it's it's tough to accept. And I posted a tweet saying, it. we have to accept this now. And by saying accept it, I don't mean we just live with it. I mean, accept the fact that we're not going to be good enough. Accept the fact that we're not going to do damage come September. Unless something drastically changes. And start reviewing the football program in a way where you can clearly identify, we're doing it every single week. Review what's going on. Have a look at it. Why isn't it working? We can't keep continuing this medium up for so long. When you've got a seven AFL Twitter account and or, or on all their social media, seven AFL posting that the, the Adelaide Crows have won more games against top eight teams than Port Adelaide. Slap in the face, I'll take it. But at the same time, by the way, 7 AFL is one of the piss weak channels um, on social media at the moment. They just post anything and everything. They think it's a meme. And I don't know, the work experience kid's having a day out because he's got the password and no one's pulling him up on it. But in saying that, it's reality. So we've got to do something. I can't sit here and say what because I'm not exactly sure what's possible short term. And I, I can't see us doing damage this year. If it changes, then I'll be even happier. You know, somehow we pull it out of our ass that we can win the premiership. They'll be happy. But at this current stage, I'm sitting here and I'm just thinking, a bare minimum, yeah, I get to watch the football. I'm passionate. I love Port Adelaide. I love the club. But I want so much more now. You know, I can see it. I can see the light, but we don't have that extra step on the ladder. What changes? I don't know. Short term, I don't think any changes will happen. We'll stick with Ken. And look, I'm fine with that. But I'm in that place where I'm fine either way. But I want something. I want reward. And it pains me that players like Robbie Gray and Travis Boke are probably not going to get a premiership unless something drastically changes. Justin Westhoff missed out on a flag. You know, Hamish Hartlett's probably not going to get one. Brad Ebert missed out on one. And you know, these players only have so long left. Give them something. And don't rely on them to do all the work for you. Structurally, we're sound. I think we've got pillars at each end, the midfield. It's just mental. 
it's the way we play the game. It's not how we look on the field or on paper. It's how we play the game. And at the moment, it's not good enough. It's not 2021 standard. Something needs to change and needs to change drastically. And we keep saying that. Will it happen? I'm not sure. But we have to wait and see till next week. We've got an eight-day break. Refresh, regroup. You know, it's been a slog the last couple of weeks. And we now need to get back to the small things and do them right. I have hope still, but it's it's very thin. It's thinning like my hair. It's starting to thin. So we'll see what happens. Let me know in the comments, Port fans, what you thought of the game. Give me your reasons. Give me your feedback. What are you, um, what are you thinking? Just let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what everyone else's thoughts. I've been reading nonstop from Twitter, Facebook, all the comments on the socials. It's an interesting one, and I think they're all starting to wake up to it. But we'll wait and see until next week. Still got games to go, still got hope, so we'll see how we go. But um, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. We're on our way to 4,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate um, if you're new and you're a Port fan or you enjoy AFL content or you just like the look of my face or something, um, it'd be greatly appreciated to see you jump on board. I'd, goal was to get over 4,000 this year so we're pushing towards that so I look forward to hopefully in the near future hitting that and uh, make sure you check out my podcast A Less Is More as well that's in the link uh, in the description below so check that out if you're looking for something a bit extra for myself uh, I'm talking about more life and the aspects of life and stuff like that so check that out but thank you so much for watching my name is Anthony and as always come the pair